Hello, my name is Ahmed Bashad. I'm professor in the Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics and the director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Fetal Therapy. Today, I would like to talk to you about a study on stage-based recipient and donor survival after Solomon laser for twin-twin transfusion syndrome. The study is being published in the September issue of Ultrasound and Obstetrics and Gynecology, which also is the Congress issue for this year's World Congress in Budapest. The ideal treatment for twin-twin transfusion syndrome will not only cure the condition, but also offer both babies the same survival chances. Over the years, laser surgery has evolved in technique. The initial laser coagulation oriented itself to vessels that cross the intertwin membrane and was done along the membrane. And although this resulted in a cure rate, it also reduced the amount of placental territory for the donor and was associated with a 30% donor mortality overall. The selective laser technique was subsequently developed that focused only on vessels that visibly connected, and this allowed to gain some placental ter for territory for the donor, but it carried the risk of recurrent disease because there are some aspects of the equator that were not necessarily coagulated. We published the Solomon laser technique in 2013, which in addition coagulates the surface of the placenta and results not only in high cure rates, but also minimizes the risk for recurrence. Nowadays, it is really only the selective and Solomon laser technique that are utilized. And of these, the Solomon laser technique really functionally transforms a monochorionic to a dichorionic placenta. And with the change in this laser techniques, the survival chances for babies have increased over the years. But there's an important consideration about the factors that affect survival. So TDTS exists in different severities. And if you offer laser predominantly to patients with lower stages, you're expected to have higher survival. So it's important to actually correct your survival expectations and analyze them for the different quintero stages. And that was the goal of this article where we basically wanted to look at stage-based recipient donor survival in a center that offers Solomon laser as a first-line therapy to all eligible patients with TDTS. We recruited over 400 patients over the last years, and it is of note that the majority of patients that were eligible for laser actually went and had fetoscopic laser surgery with the intention of two surviving babies. In this study, we report on neonatal outcomes, so that's the babies that go home with the parents. In terms of the patient population, over 50% of our lasers were done for stage 3 or 4 TTTS. Our cure rate was over 95% and 2% required a repeat laser surgery. When we looked at the survival, so recipient survival exceeded 80% across all TDTS severity stages. It was only for donors where the survival was lower in stage three, and there was the primary contributor for having a lower double twin survival also in that stage. Now, the study was not intended to compare Solomon laser outcomes to selective laser outcomes, but when you look at the only other two studies that published stage-based outcomes, Solomon laser achieved 7 to 17% higher survival across all categories of stage severities that we evaluated in the study. What is the main reason that you don't get double survival and why does the donor not survive as often as the recipient? It is related to placental share. So babies that have a smaller placental share so higher size discordance or abnormal umbilical artery Doppler studies have significantly lower survival chances after laser. In the absence of these, actually the survival chances for the recipient and donor are equal. So in summary, Solomon laser as a primary treatment really offers recipient twins and twins with uncomplicated TDTS, so no associated growth restriction in the donor, the highest survival chances. And the survival is higher than what is reported for sequential laser. 
Um, it's our goal to find out more markers that can identify babies that are uh, having a significantly lower placental share that cannot be really overcome with laser surgery and identify those donors that may not necessarily benefit from laser surgery.